let me show you how quickly you can start from scratch and get a really like high fidelity almost console quality feeling platform going so we've started a completely blank scene let's just make some floor it's a cube it's going to be a floor uh... i'm going to position this camera if i hit control shift f the camera moves to where the scene viewport is so if you see in the preview that's changed where it's looking and let's add a point light so we can actually see what's happening actually let's not do that let's add a directional light because I prefer them directional light to kind of add a bit of sunshine six add some shadows All right. so we've got a ground let's say we want a player let's just add a cube oh well it can be any shape you want really Go like that. So there's our player. Oh, it's a bit smaller. How are we going to make this cube our player? Well, you just go into the scripts folder and you've got one here called player move. Look how simple that is. There's hardly any scripts, but each one has so many uses and they can all combine. It's modular. The gameplay possibilities for your platformer are huge. So we've got player move script, let's just drop it on our box. Boom. It's done a couple of things, it's added the uh, deal damage script so that it can damage enemies. Audio source, it's added a rigid body, got character move script, which this script is like a helper script. Basically any enemy or character needs to move around and have friction and physics and yeah, all that good stuff then that will take care of it and now we've got the player move script and you know we haven't done anything we've just dragged the script on but let's just hit play all right but now if i press the keys oh okay our dude's already moving around he can already jump literally just drag the script onto whatever you want to use as your player and you know it's done a few things to auto set that up for us and it'll tell you exactly what it's done in the in the console. No floor checks. Floor checks is like an object which um, you don't need to worry about technical things, but it's going to ray cast downwards to make sure we're on the floor so that we can jump. But all right, let's add some kind of. Let me make this level a bit bigger. Uh, let's change the color of our player as well because it's a bit. Awkward. Let's just do this real quick in here. Player Matt. Let's make him Let's make him orange. You you can see if you do like a game jam or just prototyping before you get the assets from your um, 3D artist. It's so fast. All right. Well. Let's make our camera follow our player. So what script are we going to need for that? Camera follow. Let's just drop it on. I'm not sure if this is going to follow immediately. That would be pretty crazy if it did, but let's just give it a go. Okay. Camera follow has no target. That's Alright. So we need to at least assign a target. Let's name this. Player and let's just drag our player in as the target and hit play yep now we've got a camera we can rotate it with the inputs it's following our player and something to realize is you know this this camera does pretty much everything you need it to do it smoothly follows you can rotate it um, if obstacles get in the way let's add a cube just to show this it's going to avoid clipping those obstacles and um, dynamically move the camera. So if we're in game and the camera is going to go behind something. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, okay, yes I do. Main camera. We've got something here called avoid clipping tags. Any object with these tags is going to try to avoid clipping. 
the reason you've got this um, customize ability is uh, you know if it's a really small object like an enemy and it gets in the way of the camera you don't really want the camera to move out of the way of that so let's just add untagged and this gets automatically given the tag, the player tag but anyway anything that's untagged and blocking the view of our player our camera is going to move so it doesn't happen so let's just test that out boom it blocks the view and it smoothly moves so that we can still see what's going on and this is you know the same technique that uh, AAA games use pretty much. We've got a platformer. It just lost a lot of changes because I was making those changes in play mode. Alright, let's do some other stuff. Why don't we add a hazard real quick? I mean, you get the idea. You can pretty much just drop scripts in. And, you know, if you want to know how something works, just go in the guidebook. Look, we've got script guides number four. And, um... Yeah, camera follow. How do we use it? Attach it to your main camera. Variables, and it's going to explain each of the variables you've got to mess around with. I mean, you can have it controlled by the mouse, you can have it follow differently, you can lock it to a certain rotation so it follows behind the player. Really, every option you could want, um, I've included it for people to mess around with. It tells you what the script does, it gives you information, and it's written in a very obvious way. And everything is explained. So let's make a hazard. Let's just make another cube. And let's create another material so we can kind of see what's going on here. Hazard material. And this is like, you know, if you want spikes in your game. You might have spikes model. And let's just drop the hazard script onto this. For something to get damaged, like a box that needs to break, or a player that needs to lose health, or an enemy that needs to die, it needs this health script dropped on it. But because everything auto sets up, the player... Oh, we only drop player move on. Alright, well, let's give this health just drop health onto the player so I'm kinda ad-libbing this tutorial we've got one health let's change that to five do we want to take impact damage? no it's, it's all set up hit flash color it's like when when you get hit by something do you, the, what color do you want it to flash? and this is really helpful impact filter tag you can add things so that um, you know you don't want certain things to take damage from other things for example if you have like a lava enemy you might not want it to take damage from the lava in the level but obviously anything else will okay so we got our spikes here we've put hazard script on you got variables you can mess about with let's see what's going to happen here Oh, we got hurt and pushed away, and we've got five health. The health is not displaying, so we probably need a, a GUI. So we've got a script here, GUI manager, and let's just drop that on our camera. The GUI skin, let's give it a skin, because the default one is pretty bad. I'm thinking misc, yeah, the miscellaneous folder. I've got a normal GUI skin, so let's drop it on there, and then we hit play. And okay, it's showing our health at the top, we've got 5 health, we're a player, we can jump around, and we can get hurt, and now we've got 4 health. So already, you can have your player moving around in your level, you can have things to jump over, and everything else is literally that simple to set up. Like, let's add some coins in, create a little sphere. And, um... Let's just give it the coin script. Drop the coin script on it. And you've got stuff like rotation, it's just how it passively rotates. But it's a sphere, so you won't be able to tell. Um, 
And the thing is, there is like background setup needed for these these coins when the player gets close to them. They'll magnetize to the player if you want. But as soon as we hit play, the script is going to automatically set all of that up. I think. <laughs> so if we hit play, and then we go into our scene, you'll see not only is it rotating, it's got an additional trigger added to it called bounds, and it's got this trigger parent script. Basically all that means is when the player gets within these bounds, the coin is going to move towards the player, because, you know, in a platformer, I do like it when it's like Ratchet and Clank and the nuts and bolts will attract to you. But you can change that if you want. It's all up to you. And it's told us in this console, you know, for each coin, it said the coin script did attach the object was not tagged coin, so it gave it the tag coin. Uh, there was no pickup radius bounds trigger, so one has been added automatically. And now we go in, and it's actually... It's calling it cubes, I mean you can change that, but it's already counted how many cubes are in the level, which was four. We've got two because we were so close, the second we started, two got attracted to the player. But if we go and pick one up, we got three, and we got four. So immediately, within seconds, you got a brand new platformer, you got hazards, you got health, you got cubes you can pick up. But that's pretty standard stuff. Why don't we drop in some crates that we can interact with? <laughs> 